Now I've restated that formula here for you at the top of this slide, and I'd like to point out that you may find sources that have a y sub i minus an f of x sub i here on the inside of these parentheses. In other words, the position of the y sub i and the f of x sub i in this difference is swapped. But remember that changing the order of this subtraction is simply going to add a minus sign to this, and when we square that minus sign it's going to go away. So if you do see this residual sum of squares error measure presented elsewhere with the y's and the f's in opposite order, that's really and truly the same error measure that we're presenting here. This formula, the residual sum of squares error measure, is what we are going to use to measure the accuracy of a model. Now we've discussed how data points that are close to the line will have a small difference between the actual outcome and the predicted outcome on an individual scale. Notice that that trend carries over to the entire sum. Down here what I have are three of the same graphs of observations with three different theoretical models for those observations. This line, which we look at and intuitively know is a poor representation of the observations that we're seeing, is going to have a large overall residual sum of squares error measure. All of these little observations are very far away from the line, except for perhaps a few in the middle, and so each of the individual differences between the actual outcome and the predicted outcome will be large. And then I will be adding together a whole bunch of very large numbers. Similarly over here, there are a handful of observations that are close to this predicted output value, but a lot of the observations are very far away from the predicted output value, and so I will have large individual differences, which will square to be large numbers, and then I will add together a whole bunch of large numbers. So these very poor models over here and over here will have very large residual sum of squares values. On the contrary, this model in the middle, which looks to be a fairly good model for our data, is going to have fairly small differences between the actual outputs and the predicted outputs. And so the numbers we will be adding together will be significantly smaller than the numbers we would be adding together here or here. And so this model in the middle, which seems to be a fairly good representation of the data, is going to have a small RSS value, whereas these two bad models can be identified by their very large RSS values.